Hello, welcome to Market Hall Museum in Warwick. The museum is currently displaying an exhibition on the Donald Sealy Motor Company called Cars for Speed and Glamour. The exhibition will be on display between May 2021 and March 2022. Now this is the first of six short films I'm putting together to promote the exhibition. And this particular one is about the man himself, Donald Healy. Entrepreneur, racing driver, pilot, inventor, and something of a celebrity as well. So I shall be dis discussing Donald Healy, but also uh, a couple of members of his family, two of his sons, Jeffrey Healy and Brian Healy, who, who both played a significant part in the development of the company. So um, I hope you get a chance to come and have a look at the exhibition, but if not, these short films will give you uh, a, a small flavour of it. The Healy family were from Cornwall. Um, Donald Healy was born in Perranporth in 1898. He was allowed to leave school early to join the Sopwith Avi Aviation Company in Kingston, and they used to test their planes at Brooklands. Um, and so a young, you can imagine a young Donald Healy being exposed to fast cars and, and, and motor racing from, and being inspired by it from quite an early age. Um, he started a, a, an engineering apprenticeship at the uh, Kingston Technical College, but this was interrupted by World War I. Now, during the war, he, he joined the Royal Flying Corps, appropriately enough, I guess, and he acquired his, his wings in 1916. And he saw action in France flying uh, night bombers. And also I've read that he joined the Home Defence Squadron and uh, they were tasked with shooting down Zeppelins. I, I don't actually know if Donald Healy shot one down himself, but it's, it's quite a, an interesting story. But unfortunately, he was diagnosed with uh, vertigo and that put an end to his flying career uh, during the war. Back in Cornwall, he began to develop a career as a, an entrepreneur he, he set up several businesses, manufacturing crystal radio sets was, was one of them. He also ran a chauffeuring business uh, and also a garage. And he began, um, he used this as a platform really to begin en entering cars in, in lo local motorsport competitions such as speed trials. Now his, his reputation as a rally driver really began to grow uh, at the end of the 1920s and into the 1930s. And, and he, he was extremely successful. Uh, probably one of his most famous achievements was winning the Monte Carlo Rally in 1931. In fact, he, he achieved three top three finishes in, in the Monte Carlo Rally, which um, if you do that, you, you, you um, win a special medal for that achievement. And to celebrate this achievement, his hometown, Perranporth, put on a, a special event for him and in fact, in, in the collection, we've got uh, a copy of the programme for this event, which lists all his achieve motoring achievements and, uh, and, and the menu, etc. And the copy that we've got is, was obviously owned by his son, Geoffrey Healy, because it's got Master Geoffrey Healy written across the top. So you can imagine Geoffrey Healy sort of sh showing this programme to all his friends and, and show showing them all the motorsport achievements that, that uh, he, his father had, uh, had succeeded in. Now, the, those successes in the, in the Monte Carlo rally were achieved with uh, Invicta. But he also um, was very successful driving triumphs in, in rallies during, the, during this period in the 1930s. Uh, and in, in the archive collection, we've also got several publications that were produced by Triumph celebrating uh, rally success. And a lot of these feature um, Donald Teeley uh, quite heavily uh, describing some of his, his exploits. Uh, and, and which makes quite interesting reading. Now, during the 1930s, he also moved his family to Warwickshire to work in the car industry, which, of, of course, was largely based in the, the Midlands. And he worked for several um, companies uh, during this period leading up to the Second World War and into the Second World War. But mostly he worked for Triumph eventually becoming a technical director responsible for the development of cars such as the Triumph Southern Cross and the Dolomite 8. And then during the Second World War, he joined the Air Training Corps and he also helped to, to develop armoured cars 
uh, when he was working for Humber. After the war, uh, Donald Teeley sets up the Donald Teeley Motor Company, which of course is the most famous part of the story, and there's lots to tell uh, in that story, but uh, we'll cover most of that in later postings. Now the Donald Tilly Motor Company was was really a family business actually um, and so I'm going to talk a little now about um, two of his sons. We've got a rather nice photograph here taken during the Second World War which shows uh, Donald Healy with his family. There's Donald Healy you can see there on, on the, the right wearing his uh, training corps uniform I think. Um, on the left you've got his, his wife Ivy. Uh, and in the middle, you've got the three sons. Geoffrey, who was the oldest son, was in the army. The middle son, Brian, was in the navy. Uh, and John, uh, the youngest son, joined the air force. Now, John, um, I believe, made a career in the hotel industry, so he's not he doesn't feature that heavily in in the in the Healy story as such. But the other two sons certainly do. Now Geoffrey, Geoffrey uh, was a very uh, distinctive figure with it, with his walrus moustache and his pipe and uh, his his penchant for red socks, but he was also w widely regarded as a, as a, as being an engineering genius. You hear this again and again when you talk to people that that uh, knew him, and although he didn't join the company until the late nineteen forties, he was. He played a part really in the development of of the early models right from the the start, and 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 all the way through really. I think all, all the Healy cars he, he was had a significant part to play in 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 their development. And he also raced cars like his father, um, perhaps not as successful as his father, but uh, one of the um, races that that he appeared in several times was was the the famous uh, Mille Miglia, the uh, Italian road race very dangerous road race in fact he he appeared with his father they raced together in the Mille Mille on uh, a few occasions uh, until they had rather a nasty crash and uh, after that they, they decided it was probably not a good idea to race together now the archive material that we hold at the record office was acquired from Geoffrey Healy's family so he, he, he figures it was his archive so he features quite heavily within it one of the interesting aspects of it is the consultancy business that he set up with his father in in the in the seventies and eighties. But we'll, we'll talk a bit more about that in in a few future posting. Now the other son, Brian Healy, um, is commonly known as Bick. The reason he was known as Bick apparently was because of his his, his taste for biscuits uh, as as a young child. Now, um, he he was uh, responsible for the. Um, the sales division so he was much more sort of front of house sort of person and uh, he was very comfortable mixing with all the the famous people in in, in the uh, the motor industry uh, and he was also a keen photographer and a lot of the photographs in the collection were taken by him if not just in our collection but a lot of a lot of the Healy Art archive material that's out there a lot of the photographs were taken by Big. Um, but but as well as the the car side of the business, they what, what perhaps is less known is that they also for a while manufactured speedboats as well, a wing of the company that eventually became known as Healy Marine, and and Bick was put in charge of uh, of that part of the the company, and he he also featured in the racing as well, particularly racing boats. He was involved in a famous boat race down the River Seine in Paris, on a couple of occasions. Now, unfortunately, all the, the key members of the, of the Healy family uh, that we've mentioned in this posting are, are now deceased. But at the British Motor Museum in Gaydon, they've planted a series of trees to commemorate various members of the Healy family. So it might be worth having a look at those if the next time you're visiting Gaydon. So that's all I want to say in this uh, initial posting. Um, so I hope you found that interesting. And if so... Look out for further postings in which we'll be discussing various other aspects of the history of the Donald Healy Motor Company. Mm -hmm.